Okay, let's uh, call the meeting to order, I hope. <laughs> and uh, somebody would like to move the um, agenda? So moved. moved. Was it contrary, carried. Uh, move the minutes. So moved. So moved. All those in favor, contrary, carried. Next meeting date, uh, March 29th, 2022. And our first uh, item on the agenda is one of our favorite topics, rabbits. And we have a report on it. I believe there's somebody also that wants to speak to us on it. Is Sorrell Tademan's here? Yes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you speak after we've had the report uh, introduced and and one or two people, uh, council of, council of, councillors have had their first uh, crack at it. Okay, uh, Alex, you're introducing this? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, staff have nothing further to add, and we're here to um, answer any and all questions. Okay. Any questions from committee at, at the present time? Uh, Michael. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to staff, my, my one question is, which I think is an update since this report was written, the province made a new ministry of land, water, and resource stewardship. Do we feel that uh, this issue is going to transfer to that or do we have any confirmation on that yet through the chair to councillor wolf uh, we'll need to look further into that and we'll report back on, uh, on that matter okay yeah thanks to the chair i think um i know there's been struggles in the past dealing with this issue and a lot of it being uh, wrangled by provincial um jurisdiction issues but perhaps under this new ministry if it's not created uh, part of the, the land stewardship of dealing with invasive species uh, and this being uh, an, uh, an, ex an example of, of an animal invasive species in our region, uh, maybe there can be funding and ability for the municipality to, to do more without going through the province. Um, so I think it'd be a, a vital going forward to, to know where the province stands on this issue and under the new ministry. Thanks. <coughs> Anything else from committee? Okay, Sorrell. Oh, pardon me, check out first. Yeah, check. Yes, I just want to ask staff a question. Um, staff recommended that we should have a uh, rapid management study. So I just want to know um, what is the time frame for that kind of study and how soon we should come back with that recommendation. Because I think, you know, what, what has been done so far is not working. So, and with the problem, as being pointed out, Growing in the city, so I hope that, that we can have the study and the recommendation going back to us ASAP. So, what's the time time frame? Through the chair to Councillor Al, our our goal is to complete the study this year and report back to the committee uh, later on in this year. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Mr. Al. Okay, hey, thank you for having me. Um, I'll share my screen, but first I will actually address Michael's question on the new ministry. I have reached out to them, and it actually might interfere because uh, we're losing an awful lot of staff to the new ministry, and whenever there's new staff, it gets pretty, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> so I don't know that it's good news. I'll we'll just have to have to see where it sits. But um, I have sent out. Um, I'm I'm bombarded everybody. I'm sure with all sorts of things about these rabbits, and I really appreciate everybody's uh, patience. But um, we are uh, very grateful for the report from Alex and Agnes, and we do definitely agree that there is need for study and there is a uh, need for feasibility studies, all sorts of things. There's need for education. So we agree there. We may not totally agree as to um, how this is going to, to um, play out in terms of are we going to, uh, you know, is it going to go to wildlife biologists or is it going to go to animal welfare and of course we're going to be making the pitch that it goes to animal welfare. So uh, we're looking at um, being the experts in this field and uh, we really have been looking at these rabbits uh, for a decade full time. 
so we really know where they are and we know uh, how they act and we know how they're expanding. We do have this information. Uh, and we really do need growth in terms of our, our um, organization. It's, uh, it's hard being a nonprofit. It's very hard uh, in COVID times as well. So uh, we have been very successful and that is probably the only thing I take exception to on in the, in the report is that it did say that uh, the methods hadn't really worked, but they, they really have worked. And um, we have we have proof of um, of all of this. I'm going to switch modes here. So uh, we've been successful with UVic, the Richmond Auto Mall. We we've done a, a couple of strata complexes, including the Dover neighborhood that was referenced. Uh, it's always worked. So this past time, that um, the last um, year or two years, I guess we haven't actually been tasked with rabbit control because um, it's been only city property and it's only been um, the um, nuisance rabbits. So we haven't actually done a control project. So we think that um, if we do a study that explores different partnerships with the businesses and the residents that are affected by the rabbits, we can actually get a lot farther and um, get more funding in, in that way in a more controlled uh, man manner to do this. And also we're very interested in getting into um, relationships with other levels of government. These rabbits are in Alberta, they're starting in, in Ontario, they're in DEI. I mean, we're, it's a national issue and it's um, nowhere near mm. as bad anywhere as Richmond but there should be other levels of support and that does need to be explored. And there's also multiple levels of uh, people with interest in this. This works for and against the rabbits. They're very fragmented. They fall under agriculture, they fall under wildlife and they, they fall under, um, under conservation. So this is uh, not great when it, when it comes to management, but um, there are sources of funding and they really should be explored, and that's where we're going with that. And we need to increase capacity in order to uh, take on more projects and take on more rabbits. So we need research and outreach to look at available space and uh, other destinations for the rabbits. You know, they can, we can think outside the box and we can be creative and we can put colonies of, of you know 20 or 30 rabbits in multiple places and that will reduce the numbers and uh, the public awareness of course is very uh, important uh, we believe that there really has to be alternatives to people who don't want their rabbits and actually you know putting a poster out saying don't dump your pet isn't going to do anything unless they do have alternatives but it's um, you know education is always good, so we we are uh, supporting that as well. But we also think that it's coming from if it's coming from peers when we're telling them not to feed the rabbits and explaining why, it's going to hold a lot more weight than than having a, a poster from a, a you know biologist or or a, a administrator. So that's uh, another. Thing that we want, and uh, we really do want to explore bylaws. There's um, it's, it's, this Kijiji ad right here is um, is really common. There's there's the breeders are still spitting out rabbits. Uh, we have to cut it off at the source. We really have to look at further sales restrictions, breeding restrictions, sterilization mandates, and other options. And uh, again, this can be part of this, this study. Uh, and I would like to explore an urban rabbit coalition, a coalition where uh, all of the municipalities in BC that are affected by this issue actually get together and have a chat with the province. Because honestly, the province is the bottom line on this. It's been their mandates and their, their laws and policies that have really allowed these rabbits to uh, to, uh, to grow and breed because we haven't been able to do anything about them because of these laws. 
So uh, I'd really like to work on a on a province-wide strategy for Year of the Rabbit, which is 2023, and just be ready to hit the ground running. So, uh, you know, again, thanks to Alex and Magnus for the report. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you ask me one question? What what laws would we want the province to change? I'm not familiar right now, with that. Uh, right now, there's um, well, there's there's no provincial laws. There's no province-wide laws about anything to do with rabbits. They did not uh, even do the pet store ban on a provincial basis. So mm. there's there's nothing right now. But the laws that are actually impeding um, the process is the um, classification of the rabbits as wildlife. And as long as they're wildlife, we can't pick them up and um, rehome them without permits. We're uh, recently, over just the last couple of years, we, we managed to get the policy changed. So we can pick up the rabbits and we can have them in sanctuaries and there's no permit required there. But if we wanted to adopt these rabbits out under the letter of the law, we would need a permit to do that. And you know, we started doing this in you know, UVic in 2010, and it was just ridiculous, the, the paperwork we had to go through to get the permit. And they didn't. We had to export these rabbits out of out of BC, out of Canada. We had to send them out to Washington State and to Texas because because of the provincial uh, laws and policies. And uh, you know, you can't if if somebody dumps this cute little fluffy bunny uh, in the park. Technically, we can't even walk over and pick up this rabbit without a permit. That's uh, it's really been uh, an impediment to. Wow. Yeah, I never heard of that before. That's terrible. Okay, any uh, counselors have questions? Yeah, Michael. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to Sorrell, um, thanks for coming and, and providing the presentation and all the emails and all the uh, advocacy on this. I think it, it helps to create the big picture when you're getting a lot of perspectives uh, of people writing on it. Um, a couple of questions came up uh, from this, and, I, and uh, I'll ask you first, and then I'll ask staff questions after that kind of relate to them. Um, so the ones for you uh, would be um, the Kijiji uh, breeder. Has this been a, a practice that's been ongoing for a long time? And is this specific breeder in Richmond? Yes, this breeder is in Richmond. And there is um, basically when the pet store ban was passed by Richmond Council. It was innovative at the time, but right afterwards, the it, it, it just exploded on social. Well, not only social media, the the free buy sell sites, and that became the main uh, the main descent, uh, the main uh, source of uh, of pet rabbits. You know, pet stores really dropped right off the right off the map, and now. It's all Craigslist, Kijiji. Uh, th thank you. Through the chair of staff, just a, a follow-up on, on that one. Um, I'm just trying to see, are, are, are rabbits being singled out in one way or, or another? So, to Sorrel, if you know, uh, are red slider turtles or other animals that used to be sold in pet stores, are they, are they having a similar um, uh, way of being re reintroduced into the environment? Yeah, the red ear sliders. I do believe they actually did come up with legislation on red ear sliders, um, but the rabbits really haven't been addressed. Uh, the invasive species councils have done nothing uh, to, with rabbits at all, you know, other than this one pet store ban. Uh, there really hasn't been hasn't been much at all. They they're not familiar. They're they're pets. They're not wildlife, and it's always the the wildlife personnel that are assigned to deal with them and they just they have no clue great thank, thank you uh, for that uh, through the chair my, to my next question um, to the delegate is related I, and this might be uh, out of order I'm asking about their environmental enhancement grant I know they applied for it I, I think staff might still be in the consideration of them so perhaps um, no further comment is, is necessary or not 
Um, but my, my, my question really is around the, the need to grow that you mentioned for the nonprofit. Are, are, you, are you able to see that the city is offering grant maximums that could suffice for what, uh, what the organization would need for that growth? Uh, well, we're appreciative of the environmental grant, but it's only $2,500, and that's not going to help all that much. We had also put in an application for the, the regular parks grant the, um, that was declined because I guess these, um, this report was pending, but that was, uh, I think we had asked for um, $8,000, and that was for a study to uh, find more space and develop more destinations. So we can do that under this, this grant, but um, we don't, um, don't really have any operating support outside of donations. And um, it's, uh, it, it, we're asking an awful lot from the rabbit lovers. Mm -hmm. And at some point there's, you know, there's a limit. Uh, thank you, uh, through the chair. I, 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 if I may, I have two more questions. I, if I can continue, I will. Um, the next one is about, um, uh, Sorrel, your knowledge about um, the uh, um, ALR land. I'm not sure if you're aware of ALR um, exclusions or, sorry, tax um, tax breaks. And are people able to get tax breaks um, for doing animal welfare things, like hosting a sanctuary in their backyard? Is there any, do you know if there's any ties to, to that? I think it's problematic. We're trying to position it where um, rabbit compost is actually one of the best fertilizers uh, anywhere. It's you know, way better than chicken manure or anything. And I think that if we can position it as an agricultural byproduct, it, we, can, we can fall under that. But at, at this time, it's, um, it's a bit am ambiguous um, from what I've been reading. Thanks. So through the chair to de delegate, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll ask brothers to share as well on this. If, if maybe there is examples out there where people have rabbits. I know my, my great uncle, when they moved to Richmond in the 50s, they had rabbits. That was their main um, product. And, and it was, and we still see the benefits in the garden today from all the, <laughs> the droppings from those rabbits. Anyhow, uh, my last question, if I may, through the chair, um, if I could just get this clarified, as I heard the delegate. Uh, speak uh, around that there's permits required for you to pick up a rabbit because it's considered wildlife if it's going for adoption, but not if it's going into a sanctuary. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you. Those are all my questions. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, any uh, comments now from the committee? question of staff. Uh, who, was that Andy had his hand? Somebody had their hand up and it just went down. I did. Oh. I did. Oh, oh Bill. Oh, well, okay. You both. Uh, I just have a question of staff. I, I, I hope it's germane uh, to it. Uh, the issue of rabbits and, and it, we've always had it uh, where we have control and I, I, I'm going to support the report because uh, it's the best that uh, we have to offer today. But on page uh, 13, we talk about spaying and neutering and va vaccinating rabbits. Many of the rabbits that are out there and running around, et cetera, are because people left them, but they bought them somewhere. And I'm wondering if we should not be sending a resolution to the UBCM and others to talk about before a rabbit can come home, if you wish, it should be spayed. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we did the issue with uh, dogs and, uh, and puppy mills and what have you, and we took a stance on it. And, but staff, I, I've asked staff to investigate that first. Yes, yeah, somebody will say, well, it is expensive. But it's also uh, the same with cats that are out there as well. But they came from somewhere. And this is the problem. And we're not addressing where it comes. The poor rabbit doesn't know what the issue is. Uh, okay, but the person selling them, making a profit, does. And uh, maybe uh, that has to be a, you go to buy a dog from a reputable dealer. You want the, the dog's papers, correct? You buy a horse, 
You buy a cow, Harold, you buy cattle. If you don't have the papers, you don't buy it, okay? So I'm just wondering, from, uh, because we would have control with bylaws uh, on pet stores, et cetera. I don't know if we've got any even left now. Um, but dealing with it, but I think through the UBCM or whatever, we could go through the, um, the whole lower mainland, at least, into other groups. Um, so that animals, uh, given, given where we are in society today with animals, um, I think we've got to look at the broader picture in that. So um, I'm not going to have criticism staff. Maybe staff have a comment. I thought page 13 was very explicit, very well done. Um, but again, I, I throw that back uh, um, on it to, to staff. Sure, sure that. Through the chair to Councilor McNulty, certainly in just in response to the concept of going to UBCM, uh, I think because uh, many of the challenges around rabbits that both the staff report and the delegation have spoken to do reside because of the provincial regulations, I think that would be a good avenue to investigate and, and see what support we could uh, garner from across the province. Well, if you come up with an approach for us, uh, then I'd like to see it on a future uh, uh, agenda, we move a, a formal recognition um, or f formal resolution um, to do so and circulate that if it done passes, then circulate uh, to the other municipalities because it's not just a Richmond problem. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Michael and then Linda and then me. Michael. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. I had four, four items, but one I think was covered with the Council McNulty's discussion there of the UBCM resolution potential. I, I know in Sorrell's presentation, she talked about the, the year after being year of the rabbit and that having a big splash, but I don't think we should wait till then. I think at this, this round coming up, we should get the resolution related to um, rabbits being adopted and needing to be spayed or neutered and, and that being the provincial strategy for this uh, upcoming UBCM. So I'd, I'd be in, uh, definitely in support of that when it comes around. Uh, I just wanted to check that staff doesn't need further direction or res uh, like an actual vote on that today to bring that back, or should we have that even? Yeah, I guess that's my first question. Should yeah. should this be a separate um, motion or referral for that UBCM? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Wolf, uh, we would bring back a proposed resolution as well as background information, and then Council would make a decision as yeah. to whether to put it forward or not. That's the way to do it. Great. Thanks. And then uh, through the chair, this, uh, my sec next question is about breeding as well. And that Kijiji breeder from Richmond, um, or the host site is Kijiji, they're not the breeder. Um, should this be brought up with community safety uh, uh, along with the dog and the cat bylaws? Or um, is someone from community safety here now who can comment on where that would fit under existing city bylaws? Through the chair to Councillor Wolf, uh, we'll certainly be coordinating um, the feral, uh, feral, ra feral rabbit management study with all relevant um, city departments. Good. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, through the chair, I will follow up at the next community safety meeting um, to see where that would fit in. Um, next one, uh, if I may, is related to uh, if staff who are on the call who knowledgeable with the ALR and, and ALC um, uh, examples uh, if we can find uh, where animal welfare uh, like having hosting sanctuaries or as was mentioned by the delegate um, rabbit manure where where and if that uh, is has ever been used um, anywhere in the province uh, for farm use or for farm tax um, uh, incentives anyone on the call right now could confirm that they, they could work on that or I'll bring it up at another meeting if not or who I should email about that uh, through the chair to Councillor Wolf we'll, we'll look further into that as also as part of the management okay great thank you that's all to the chair Melinda uh, thank you mr. chair and thanks to Councillor McNulty for bringing uh, the idea of a a motion to UBCM up. I had it in my notes here, advocacy, and so I was looking at a couple of different things. So, you know, the UBCM is in September. I believe there's a May deadline for um, resolutions to UBCM. So, you know, just giving you that timeline. 
And perhaps, like this is not a new issue, unfortunately, and I know that this has come up a couple of times at UBCMs that I've been at. So perhaps, you know, in staff's research, we could get a list of other motions that have gone to the UBCM. And, you know, their um, resources, their online search is really good. You'll, it'll come up really quickly. And then the other part of it is the province has been, you know, tossing this around for years. I mean, I can remember talking to staff years ago about this. And so I'm hoping that at some point staff will come back with us about, and I can't remember if we've written to the province about this before. So if we could get, um, you know, some information if we've had advocacy to the province on this before. And, you know, I think we really need, besides going to the UBCM, we really need to write to the province. I mean, this is just getting unbearable, um, as you can evidence by the correspondence we've received. You know, people really feel strongly about this, and we need some direction from them. So, I think, um, you know, we're going in the right direction. I support the report and the findings of the report. Thank you. Okay, I've got a couple of comments and a couple of questions. And uh, so to start off with, I know an awful lot about reps. <laughs> about 30... 40 years ago, uh, we had a huge plague of rabbits in the ALR, South of Eastern Highway, 10 times as what we have now. And, they died. and uh, basically, I called for a cull, and I got emails and letters from all around the world blasting me for wanting to kill the Easter Bunny. I, I got responses from Alaska telling me how to trap them and <laughs> make them into fur coat, rabbit fur coats. Anyway, uh, we also got uh, suggestions from Reno, Nevada, to set up what we now call Rabbitat. And they're, they're, what they were doing is they were getting people to take 10 rabbits for household and, and feeding those rabbits to the end of their days after they'd been spayed and neutered. But what happened was amazing and may not be good for the rabbits. There were so many rabbits south of Stevenson Highway, a rabbit plague came through and killed them all. And, and if any of you know your history, uh, Australia has had plagues of rabbits for hundreds of years. And every few years, they, they get overpopulated, and then they all die off and start over again. But what happened in Richmond is they all died off. There are very few rabbits. But while there were lots of them, a few coyotes had moved in, and the coyotes kept the population down. Uh, down at my end of, of Richmond, uh, we were overplagued with rabbits. I haven't seen a rabbit here in years, except for one or two that get dropped off at Easter time, uh, and they'll, they'll hop around our front yard or at the end of Steve's Highway at the road for three or four days, and then they're gobbled up by those are coyotes. Our problem is not rabbits. We're overrun by coyotes, and they're killing our chickens. So that, that'll give you an example of, of how, the, how the cycle works. So the question I've got is, is, is there really a problem? Uh, you know, what's what's wrong with the way, the way it's working out now? Because I'm sure we've got less rab rabbits in the agricultural area than we had 20 or 30 years ago. And for certainly far, uh, there's none here. And, and we were overrun with them at the time. So uh, in terms of your study, uh, maybe you can tell us what the, what the problem is. Uh, a lot of people just don't like rabbits. Uh, what damages do they do? Um, I'd be interested in that because I, I, I kind of thought the program was working out just quite well the way it is. The second uh, comment, somebody talked about rabbit poo for fertilizer, and there's any enter enterprising farmers out there, the very, very best uh, climate change greenhouse would incorporate rabbits. And if you catch about 10 or 20 rabbits, put them at one end of your greenhouse, feed them all the refuse uh, plants and foods, they actually warm the greenhouse. You don't need electricity. You don't need natural gas. You simply use the heat of the rabbits to, to heat your greenhouse. So maybe we should try some unique ways of dealing with this. But I'd really like to know what the problem is, because I certainly haven't seen it here. And uh, I'd, li I'd like to see you get rid of some, some of the coyotes that are, there, that are bothering us. But uh, that's got nothing to do with rabbits. We've got a, an overpopulation of coyotes. The coyotes are eating so those rabbits. are my comments. <laughs> yeah. So those are my comments, and uh, I would like your staff to add some of those ideas to their to their study. As to is do we really need to do anything about it, or, or, or will the rabbits look after themselves? Anyway, any further questions? Move the recommendation. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Carried. Okay. Next item is. Uh, 
Richmond Public Art Program Annual Highlights and Public Art Advisory Committee Work Plan. Brianna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have nothing to add to the report, and I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Any, any questions from the committee? Just want to. No. Yeah, I just want to say a great work plan. Looking forward to it. Thank you for the data. When we have a total of 344 works already mm -hmm. out there and 192 on display, good job. Um, it's nice to see the soul of our community uh, out in the public art. Thank you. Hey, anyone else? It is. I'm now on the committee with Bill the consulting committee, and it's really great. I'm enjoying it very much, seeing these things go through. It's fantastic. Any uh, other Someone comments? Left. Second. All those in favor? Contrary, carried. Uh, engaging artists in the community public art projects. Another great report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Nothing to add to the report, and I'm here to answer any questions. Again, same comment. Please. Move the recommendation. Any other kind uh, uh, Linda. Oh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to echo a great report, and I really think the projects that have been selected are uh, amazing. Um, I recently walked with the Richmond Fitness and Wellness, and we went along the Shell Road Trail. And, you know, so as we're walking, we're in nature, and we're looking at the eagles and the birds and people walking their dogs, and I can just imagine these videos happening. So I, I think that's outstanding. All the projects are outstanding, so thank you. Okay, so who's the motion? So oh, uh, Jack. Jack. Right. Yeah, I just want to add uh, to the comment that uh, all these programs and, and projects are very innovat innovative and creative. I think good work. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary, carried. Uh, the next is the naming of the community center uh, on number 302 Capstan. And I've got a question at the beginning. Um, I, people keep asking me, who is Mr. Capstan? <laughs> we name our, our roads, we name our buildings, we name everything after a person. Mm -hmm. And I think we need a real work of art to show what a capstan is. So maybe that should be the next next art project. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's go through the report because I, I think the name's great, but we've got to tell people what a capstan is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Uh, it was. I moved the recommendation. That's a no brainer at second. the moment. Yeah, it's moved and seconded. I, I agree. It's a no brainer. It should be capstan. But maybe let's take it under advisement. We can have an art program to to do some some major artwork to show what a capstan is, <laughs> because nobody knows what it is. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Contrary, carried. Uh, next one: investing in Canada infrastructure program, green infrastructure, Aye. and uh, a grant for eight hundred thousand dollars. Any any questions on that one? Move the recommendation. Second. Do you have anything to add to this, Jason? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Contrary. Carried. That's a good one. Okay. Good grief. We're at manager's report. So what do we got? Just two quick ones, Mr. Chair. Thank and you, then Mr. I have Chair. a couple of questions after, if I may. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm here to provide an update on Family Day, uh, which took place this past weekend. I am pleased uh, to inform you that the city and our community associations received a total of $10,000 from the provincial government to support community-based family day initiatives. Uh, through this, we were able to offer a variety of free and low-cost activities at many of our community centers, both virtually and in person. Whether you consider family as seniors and their grandchildren, parents and their children, or simply friends participating together, there was something for everyone. Activities ranged from our more traditional open gym, parent and top playtime, family yoga, swimming, skating, uh, to our more creative and innovative opportunities such as a virtual dance party, gardening with grandparents, and even a family movie night at Watermania. We were particularly pleased with the strong participation rates, uh, most notably for our in-person activities. Uh, where we welcomed over a thousand people in our community centers and the art center, over 3,000 people at our pools, and over 500 people at the nature park. Wow. Good. 
Any questions from the committee? Okay, thank you. Good report. Who's next? Hi there. I um, wanted to give an update on uh, conversations uh, in recent times around the Chinese Canadian Museum uh, work that's happening in the province. Um, staff met with the chair of the Chinese Canadian Museum Society, Grace Wong, and their exhibition and program manager, Sarah Ling, in November 2020 to discuss the potential to work with the Chinese Canadian Museum Society uh, and explore opportunities to offer historical interpretation of Chinese Canadian enrichment as part of the Chinese Canadian story in BC and, and the initiative that, um, that that group has been undertaking for many years. Uh, at that time, the Chinese Canadian Museum Society acknowledged the important contributions made by Chinese Canadians in Richmond and were interested in working with the city of Richmond as they, quote, spoke of the museum that, that they have been undertaking. Uh, in recent um, news, you may have heard that the hub of that hub model uh, was recently confirmed to be the Wing Fang building in uh, Chinatown in Vancouver. Um, in addition to that, in October 2020, the Richard Museum and the University of British Columbia Initiative for Student Teaching and Research in Chinese Canadian Studies signed an MOU to collaborate on research projects in the Richmond community, which will support museum content shared through the Richmond Museum's online platforms, exhibition spaces, and in person. This work is ongoing, and with, there's the launch of a new online video series anticipated this spring. Uh, the outcome of this work not only is about contributing to the Richmond Museum's content, but really developing the relationship and the understanding that may form the basis of a future, quote, folk for the Chinese Canadian Museum in general in Richmond. Um, staff have reached out again recently to the Chinese Canadian Museum Society to have a follow-up conversation and are waiting to hear back. Okay, very good. Any questions? Okay, uh, Jack. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the report. Well, actually, you know, I've, I'm quite concerned about you know what what I'm seeing. Uh, the fact that they have two museums in in, in Vancouver right now on the same street, East Pender. Uh, of course, I know that one is being supported by the provincial government, and the other, probably they got some funding from the uh, provincial government as well, but it's being run by a um, non-profit society. I mean. In, in a way, there's just too much concentration of the uh, museums in Vancouver. And whereas in Richmond, which I think is a very unique place, and we have a very unique history of the um, Chinese um, Canadians. Uh, as I mentioned, probably in other places, we talk more about the laborers and also the railway workers. But in Richmond, we have many more Chinese people involved in farming I think Harold has a very good knowledge about the Chinese farmers right from the beginning. So I, I really feel very disappointed that the government, the provincial government, has not committed uh, or, you know, make, make further uh, commitment about having a, a higher uh, priority of having some storytelling center or programming in, in Richmond. So I really, I really hope that uh, the the provincial government, as well as the Chinese Museum Association, I, I don't know what the proper name is. I, I hope that they are, they are really taking us seriously and hope that uh, some programs can really come to Richmond, not just on an ad hoc basis, but you know, to tell the Richmond uh, story uh, in, in deeper, deeper uh, depth and also um, make it some, some something different from um, what they have in rich I mean in Vancouver and I always feel that the museum should not be about the past but it should be also about the present and in the future and I think Richmond is really uh, in a very good position to have that yeah I, I'd like to echo Jack's words um, I really think that the Chinese bunkhouse, the entire building, should be a museum. We don't need a, a, a meeting room downstairs. There's, you've got meeting rooms in center, city center. You have meeting rooms anywhere. 
but I think it's, a, it's extremely important that we double the space. I know that in our collection we've got a, a Chinese water pump that's a hand that, that pumped water out of the canals to water the crops that, that they were run by foot pedals or something like that. I've got piles of Chinese baskets that they help, uh, that the Chinese workers carried over their shoulders with yokes around their necks. We, we, we've only got a fraction of the of the Chinese history in the uh, Britannia bunkhouse upstairs, and I think it's time we got got around and did something with it. Um, I, I've, I've got a lot of knowledge up here that hasn't been hasn't been collected yet. I've just been working uh, over Christmas. I spent two months uh, assembling about a hundred photographs and scanning them of Japanese history in this community. I don't have that many uh, pictures of Chinese workers, but I've got probably just as much documentation. And so it's it's time that we actually spent some time on our Chinese yeah. history. So, mm -hmm. so I think that uh, mm -hmm. that in spite of the uh, what the uh, association is doing, we need to get on with it here in Richmond. Anyway, that's my comment, uh, and I'm offering that as a, as one that's deeply involved, and I think it's important that uh, that we work on that real real quick. Uh, okay, and Harold. Yeah. Yes. P perhaps yeah. You know, I don't think I don't know if we should have a motion. I don't have the I don't have the wordings yet. But I think should we have a motion to to direct staff to work more closely with um, whoever the, the the museum society or the provincial government to bring the um, a, a storytelling center or some programming uh, into Richmond so that staff can work on it and put more, more effort into making it happen. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I don't know how you want to word it, but, yeah. So, um, Mr. Chair, could I make a suggestion? Yes. Perhaps um, we can have the, the follow-up meeting that we've requested and then provide an update from that meeting to Marin Council and decide at that time uh, whether we feel a referral would be necessary. Okay, yeah, so, that, so sounds yeah, that, that sounds great to me, okay. Good. Okay, I think you said there's one more staff report. Oh, yeah. Bill. Yeah, before we uh, rush off with euphoria, um, I think we should put things in perspective. I don't agree with Councillor Howe and we should bring something from downtown here. I think we develop our own. Uh, you have information on farming. I have information on fishing. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those that don't know it, uh, it was Chinese construction that built Number Two Road in 1884. It was Chinese construction that built all the roads on Sea Island. It was Mr. Toy that built Number Three Road. You know, I could go on and on, uh, Mr. Ao, about the Chinese uh, contribution to Richmond. And Harold, you can talk about the Chinese gardens over in Hamilton, um, uh, near the peat uh, bog over there, etc. We have enough enrichment yes. to embellish a whole museum to ourselves. When I hear we bring down exactly. town, you know, it, it's, it's like um, some of the ethnic groups. The people downtown were the city slickers, and the people out in Steveston and out in Richmond were the, pe the peasants, if you wish. And there was a social clash, dif uh, clash and social class difference. So I just think um, with some help with staff, et cetera, and given some leads that we come back with a paper. I agree with you that with the bunkhouse could be the museum uh, downstairs um, with proper lighting, et cetera. And it, you know, we, we don't need two floors of the museum. We don't need 20,000 square feet. Uh, the bunkhouse upstairs is a museum in itself. Yes. And it's excellent. Absolutely excellent what we've got there. We need to add what's missing, and there is an opportunity downstairs in that, uh, what, 30 by 30 feet, uh, 150, 200, 300 square feet. So I think we've got lots right there alone, and I could go on. I have some papers and thesis uh, uh, in my collection, and uh, collectively can we put our heads together and um, add to it. Uh, we have to... Um, Remember the development, uh, the first fire chief of Richmond um, was Mr. Hing, built his own fire truck. That's a story and a museum piece in itself. We had Hong Wo, who had a labor force of 
150, agriculture and fishing, the Herald would go on and on. I mean, I can go on all night on Chinese history. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got stuff. It's just how we bring it out and what we want to see. So I think the committee of you, me, and Mr. Howe, we can put it together. Yes. Uh, and staff, there's, uh, I mean, I can, I'm going to stop there because this is a Parks and Rec meeting. So I think the other thing, it's going to cost money. And people are going to have to vote for the budget and put it in the budget so that we can, uh, we can have some operation. Because I think it should be an active museum and uh, not just come in and have a look. There should be somebody there who can tell a story or whatever. Anyhow, and I've got a number of postcards uh, myself uh, that I've purchased in my collection over the years to go with my Japanese and, and First Nations uh, postcards and photos, etc., from yesteryear. So anyhow, I'll stop there, Harold, and uh, uh, on it. But I think, uh, you know, we've got farming, fishing, construction, uh, community safety, mm -hmm. and I can go on from there. There are others. So we've got some uh, um, what I call model pioneers that don't have the recognition that uh, one should give uh, to them, along with many others in other um, other cultures as well. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Yeah. Great. I'll, I'll add to that and then go to Linda, but uh, and then I'll shut up. But uh, Bill mentioned what he's got. I've got a lot of stuff in Chinese. I need somebody that, that can that can tell That's us what right. it says. And that's, uh, that's one of the problems, is the language. The other thing I've got, I've got 40 paintings of Hong Wo's store and the fishing boats around it on the walls of my oh house. It's enough for, a muse, for an art gallery. So this is the kind stuff. of stuff we've got. Mm -hmm. Great. Anyway, that's Linda. Stuff. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Well, I think there was a lot of hope when the Chinese Canadian Museum was announced and, you know, all the plans were that it was going to be a spoke and hub kind of thing with traveling artifacts and traveling exhibitions. So I think we should let staff do their work. Because I think what we're talking about now is something totally separate. And I, I, just a question uh, to staff. Do we have anything like this on any of our work plans to look at the Chinese history in Richmond uh, with the Chinese bunkhouse? Because I think the reason I'm asking is, I mean, we've been doing a lot of work down uh, in Steveston, and I know there's been a lot of synergies that have come about the consultations, and perhaps I'd, we just need a little bit more thought on it because I agree with Councillor McNulty. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, and there will be a financial uh, cost to this that we'll have to look at. Uh, through the chair to Councillor McPhail, currently on the Richard Museum's work plan is um, the development of an exhibit for 2023. That's specifically focusing on the contributions of Asian Canadians uh, in Richmond with a heavy focus on Chinese Canadians. Um, the intention is that, that that is part of the partnership with the UBC program, uh, which is working with Dr. Henry Yu, who is um, sort of a key player in the Chinese Canadian Museum Society movement as well. And the outcomes of that exhibit, while you know, the content would be on show maybe for one year at the Rich Museum, it would be content that could form the basis of future displays connected to the Rich um, sorry, the Chinese Canadian Museum more broadly. And uh, hopefully in our next conversations, there will be um, a clear plan of what what the Chinese Canadian Museum Society is envisioning for communities outside of Vancouver. In our last conversations, they didn't have a clear plan for that. And I think we've continued to work on developing relationships and content that can be utilized for those purposes. Um, it, the content could also be used in other locations, such as the Chinese Clock House or another location that, as council determined. So we are actively working on that content without a physical location specifically identified at this point. All right, thank you. Okay, is that uh, we'll any more? Yeah. No. Yeah, th yeah, thank you for that. Move adjournment on. One more. Oh, Michael. Yeah, uh, Michael yeah, has something to raise. Thank, thank you, just uh, I think these are gonna be all very quick. Um, we, uh, council and committee received the memo from seasonal outdoor skating opportunities. This was from Alex uh, last week. Mm -hmm. um, I just had one question on there. It, it does mention um, that staff will look into uh, 
it uses the word the phrase promote opportunities for public skating does that actually mean flooding to promote those opportunities or no purposeful flooding uh through the chair to councillor wolf uh indeed we, our approach was to coordinate with other city departments to uh, capitalize on cold weather events to flood low-lying uh, low areas such as Gary Point Park, as has been done in the past. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks. That's the clarification I was looking for there. Uh, through the chair, the next one, uh, we also received, I think it was uh, maybe the week before, an email from a resident about registration for Richmond Recreation. Uh, and I, that's a common thing I've heard from families and individuals uh, who, want, who want to use our, our, our facilities for the great programming we offer. But when they go to register at the 7 a.m. opening, it's already filled up at like a minute later. Um, has there been a reply to that? And I think that what if there is, maybe that reply could be more widely broadcast because I think a lot of people are unaware of, of what the process is. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify what your question is? Are you looking for a response to that specific email or? Well, well, well just normally we, we receive council and receives the response that staff give to that individual, but, but I never, I never haven't seen one yet. Maybe it's, maybe it's in my box right now. I'm going to go tonight and, and see. Right. But, so uh, through the chair, I did have a conversation with the gentleman um, and uh, he, he, he recognizes that um, our programs, we are in the process of growing our programs in alignment with interest as we come out of the pandemic. He was also interested in consideration of priority for Richmond residents uh, for registration, and that's something that we would have to look further at. And that was mentioned in his email. Um, and so uh, we're, we're um, going to do a little bit of research with Perfect Mind as to what percent of our registrants are Richmond residents. There would certainly be pros and cons to doing anything around that. Great. I appreciate that. that, that I was hoping to um, that staff acknowledged it and that it's something that we can't answer right now because it's ongoing data collection. Um, so great. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, my next one, um, just I, I think I can't remember which meeting it was, but the Gateway Theatre uh, presented to Council a few weeks ago. Uh, and uh, one of the things I asked them was, how did you power your facilities, your, your outdoor theater that you did during COVID? And they mentioned that um, they used the city's uh, generators to power their equipment. Um, so my question is, like, this is in the park. This is at Minaru uh, Park there, at the edge of it, at least. Um, do we have a portable battery storage, something that uh, is grid rechargeable, that's clean, doesn't burn fossil fuel, and is silent? So if you're trying to host an event or city program is happening outdoors uh, that we can provide that with, with an, an electric al uh, alternative. Do we, do we have such a thing to be used in our parks? Um, uh, through the chair, perhaps I can uh, answer that question and some of my colleagues may, may like to jump in. Um, I believe at this time we don't have something like that. Um, oh, but I'm going to jump in. We do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, we, we've just acquired uh, in the past year, and that's in fact what, what the Gateway borrowed. Um, we've been able to deploy it in a number of events, uh, in particular outdoor settings, where as you've identified, noise can be an issue, um, not uh, along with the environmental challenges with it. So um, we are evaluating the uh, the you know, should we get more? Sorry, I'm not being very eloquent here, but uh, it's been a it's been a test to get one, uh, and we may may get more. And certainly, how we use resources to support community events is a very important part of our work. So, we're looking at it. Uh, great, thanks, to the Chair. Did I, can I just get clarification? Did I call it what the city's calling it? The, is it a portable battery storage unit? Is that what we're? Uh, I, Greg, you know, uh, one of the challenges, of course, is without knowing the question is coming, it's difficult yeah. for us to have a thorough answer for sure. you. Um, yeah. I've, I've called it an electrical generator, but that's probably not the right word. Great. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so it's good to know it exists and it's been used and it's being studied. So thank you. My final question, uh, and I think Greg 
was on the line with you. Okay. I might have to email Greg uh, to clarify if this is a question for him or not. Um, apparently, a number of lights are burned out at the recreational area at uh, Burnett, at Burnett School, the Thompson area, where there's a lot of crosswalks and stuff, and lights are on until 11 o'clock. But I, I've heard from a few people now that there's about six bulbs that are out. Are they waiting to be replaced with the new fixtures, like the new LED poles as well and wiring, or uh, are we just needing to change the bulbs on the existing one? And if no one here can answer that, I, I think I would email Greg Wheeler on that. Through the chair to Councillor Wolf, I can follow up on behalf of our sports team and um, get it taken, looked at, and if it's not going to be fixed, we'll get back to you. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. That's all. Appreciate that. Okay. Anything else? Move adjourned. Move adjourned. Adjourn. All those in favor? Right. Contrary, carried. Lots of good information today. That's it.